this applies a lot to the average person because for someone like me who's played sports who's dealt with sports injuries i'm dealing with probably the worst sports injury of my life right now mm-hmm. with the acl tear but i've had tiny niggles in the past i've had a tennis elbow etc mm-hmm. so i'd categorize the modern day healthy human into three categories someone who has a bad sports injury yeah someone who'll get that generic sports injury you know if you keep lifting weights at some point something is going to happen it's right. just the nature of lifting weights even if you have the perfect form etc it's just how weight training works yeah you agree as a doctor yeah 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 but um, but again there could be bad weight training there yeah. could be good weight training uh, injury prone weight training yes you're right you're risking if you're not doing it properly yeah. yeah um i've noticed this with every single person i know at least in india yeah goes about weight training and i love weight training i'm i'm a big proponent of it yeah but sometimes over the course of like decades of weight training sometimes you just miss out on some nuance yeah, yeah. Uh, which is why everyone in my city needs a physio yeah anyone who's fit needs a physio yeah, yeah. to in yeah, today's yeah. day and age so this is my second category that someone who's just fit yeah will have some small niggle mm-hmm. it's just the side effect of being fit the third category is just the average person yeah say who's just doing basic you mm-hmm. know strength training little bit of calisthenics little bit of yoga mm-hmm. um and is staying walking yeah, yeah. just the normal mm-hmm. you know kind of what our parents this generation does exactly yeah i'd also keep a fourth category of like a bad lifestyle someone yeah. who's overweight someone who's not taking care of themselves still young yeah yeah but yeah. still young still young and yeah. there's a lot of that in yeah, our yeah, country yeah, as yeah, well yeah 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 so four mm. categories of human beings mm. yeah will all these four categories be assisted by stem cells when it comes to the quality of their life because we're living in an age where we sit so much mm-hmm. where we're not nomadic anymore we're not walking around exactly we're not that active yeah uh i think we are going to develop hip issues knee issues and spine issues yeah. as a generation have i said something wrong medically speaking no no actually that was one of the best questions the reason is you kind of covered the whole spectrum so i can talk a lot a lot about it because a lot of people have the same thing like who does it work on how does it work is it only on sports people is it not on old people but you, the way you categorize like you know how we live our lives basically so let's take the first spectrum the first spectrum is like elite athletes we'll just say like somebody's elite athlete um professional sports or cricketers or any other sports football basketball so they cannot afford to be down say like if you're playing for india you're playing for some your injury has to heal that's money for them i mean that's money for the country money for everything so the urgency to get better is so much in there so there is an injury they are not going to wait 10 days 2 weeks 2 months and find out what it is you want to diagnose them right away so a lot of times if it's not a catastrophic injury it's a good early injury so most of the athletes come with like hey i have a tear or or you know i i broke this thing or or my meniscus has been done or some could be chronic you know when they're keep on playing 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 they could have like chronic injuries of uh, something and it can come up so those are the patients that we look at them look at their mri scan see what's going on okay you have a partial tear of something you know we're talking about a cartilage ligament tendon whatever it is your knee shoulder any joint depending on your sport right okay you're not fully torn you do not need surgery but you need to get better if you don't need to get better how are you going to go back and play rehab is not going to help by itself because you have to heal that that's one category so what we do is we diagnose them and we aspirate their bone marrow we take the cells we precisely with the guidance you know it's called intervention not surgical orthopedics it's interventional orthopedics so we go with an intervention with the needle based technology we have uh, some machines called ultrasounds and the fluoroscopy so you get look into those things inject those areas and uh, you know give him certain amount of rest and get him back into the rehab this is much shorter compared to if you have an invasive surgery invasive surgery may put you out for several months with an interventional 
procedure, you're not cutting, you're not taking any tissue, you're only enhancing, you're only regenerating. So their rehab time, their recovery time is cut in short and they're able to avoid any major surgery. Plus they can maintain their own body. So that's the sports people. They come in, we treat them at an early stage, they're good, they go back. Then the next category is like somebody like who sits but young, but his job or his, his, his work related is creating those problems. For example, most of our IT professionals are we're sitting eight, nine hours um, and working most of the time. I think it's all professionals. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not only professionals. I mean, like you know, you know, a lot of jobs that require sitting. I mean, like any anything. So, what does sitting do? I mean, sitting is literally. I'm sitting right now. It's lowering my intradiscal pressure. So my discs, my discs are like cushions, right? That's the one that's going to, you know, g get me support off my spine. So you're sitting, and I'm sitting for that long. So I'm kind of lowering my intradiscal pressure. Um, so e you even even if I keep my back straight, I'm still loading it. It will help, but it's not when you sit like that. You got to have the muscle strength to hold those things. Got it. How long can you sit like this when you don't have the muscle strength? So you got to work on your muscle strength, get a good posture, you know, obviously get the good chair, good lumbar support. But sitting in general as creates that that part of it right you know lying down is great for the discs great for the hips but we can't lie down all our <laughs> life we have to come back and work right so that category that category is like okay more we call that a deconditioning um and like hey i mean i'm not in injury i'm not playing sport but i have this hip pain i have this back pain i have this neck pain i'm on the computer all the time some people get the cmc joints textures arthritic changes carpal, tunnel. carpal tunnels um so knee problems because you're sitting all the time and you're not stretching it so all these are chronic and they can build up on you and on top of it for example if you're not doing your exercises beyond you know after the work you're not taking care of your muscle tone you're not hydrating yourself you're not eating healthy food to recover your problem can accelerate and you can see these a lot of these young people like oh, i can't sit my back is hurting a lot i can't drive because i can't bend mm. so there's no injury or or an accident that happened this is chronic lifestyle created so these patients have to be recognized at an early stage so we have to find out okay what is going on say like you're having back pain right is it a damaged disc or is it just a posture weakness of the muscles or you have facets and ligaments and all those so by an examination you'll be able to tell somebody has no problem with the disc but they have zero muscle strength and they kind of slouch they have no core strength so recognizing is one thing so correction lifestyle changes number one thing number two is you have early warning signs hey you're wearing out a little bit of the disc here. You're wearing out the labrum here because you're losing some of the cartilage there. So now, okay, can we repair that? You know, let's go repair that thing. And then you exercise. Then you avoid that posture and build the strength on your core. So all those can be done at early stage. So it's not only professional athletes, but regular guys like you and me do. The other category is like people that go to the gym lift heavy good all good right it's all good but what i see i'm not saying in india but what i see now nowadays is the training methods are not medically appropriate in i won't say all the gyms most of the gyms because um the culture is like oh i want to get six pack i want to look great i want to get this thing in three months but how are you training are you training the proper way? Are you lifting exercises? Are you doing overheads? Are you creating damage to your rotator cuff? These are certain certain techniques we'd say never do it. For example, a military press is no more. I mean, the last four years, we have noticed more people, you know, creating tears in their rotator cuff. We cannot do that. Just like you, you're talking about an overhead press? Overhead weighted military press or, or even abdominal crunches, right? I go to the gym, I see like everybody doing abdominal crunches. Trainers are making them do, do, do those things. We have seen people that bulge their discs. So there are modifications you got to do. You got to see like, okay, 
you cannot do that. Maybe do a plank or bridge, you know, those kind of things. So overuse injuries in the gym or improper training, they can create damage. Sometimes you don't have to tear something, but your body will give you warning signs. So your body tells like, okay, I've been working out, man, I'm getting a little stiff in here. Okay, stiffness is gone. Tomorrow I'm fine. I'm going back again. Again, I'm getting a stiffness. So you, you see a pattern going, don't ignore that. Mm. Let's catch it early. You could have a ligamentous laxity, like your joint. Maybe it's like a rubber band stretching. That means you are going to have a tear in there. You're going to damage that thing. You're still working on it. So that's the category that we want to know proactively. Okay, I am doing certain things, but it's giving me some problem. But the problem is not there all the time. Then I'm going back to work. I'm fine. I'm ignoring it month by month by month. Or stop doing that exercise so that you don't have pain. But those are the ones we want to recognize early. This is called the proactive way. So anything, you know, if a walker is having some pain in the knee or somebody is going up and down stairs having pain, but no pain walking straight. And if it's happening, that means there's something going on. That means there's a, there's a little bit of a thinning of the cartilage or tracking of the kneecap. Something is going on, right? We got to identify that thing. If you identify, treat that thing either with the physical therapy or with the biologics. It could be PRP, it could be stem cells, or sometimes it could be just growth factors. But... We recognize you treat that thing, you're back on track, mm -hmm. you're enjoying your life, you're not letting this go to the end stage. When you let a knee arthritis or something at stage one untreat it, you will never have stage four. You will never need a knee replacement. Mm. So that's what happens uh, culturally like, oh, I will go when the pain is bad, pain is not that bad. So what happens three, four, five, six years, you're limping, limping, your life is all gone then you try to go to a doctor, then you can't regenerate when it's that far gone. So that's one category that we treat as well proactively. Most important sentence from this entire episode has just been spoken by you. You said that when there's a little pain, do not ignore it. Exactly, yeah. I think we tend to ignore it when we're teenagers and in our early 20s because yeah. the body's regenerating so much. Yeah. But everyone around me after the age of 25 who's healthy, yeah. has some niggle. Yeah. A lot of the ones who don't do any physical activity have a lot of niggles. Exactly. And all these yeah. little pieces of pain inside your body are just early signs for some big explosion that's going to take place later. Exactly, yeah. Fair to say? Yeah, no, so when you have like a warning sign like that and it's consistent, right. so like it's getting, you know, a little intense or staying there, that means there is something beyond a small sprain. So you need to be checked up. Gotcha. simple as that you know you can still if you want to really enjoy lifting weights hey continue that all your life but let's take care of it let's correct it then you can do that thing imagine if you tear it fully you can never go back to the gym again so that thought process so that's another population the last population is already there for example we see a lot of uh, women men like arthritis, say I'm suffering with arthritis for five years, six years. So we see that kind of population as well. That's already when, by the time we see the knees, you know, knees are getting bone on bone. So kind of already very advanced arthritis. So you can't prevent it any further, but the goal is to maintain them. Hey, can we maintain your lifestyle? Can we improve it? Maybe if not 100%, can we get to 70, 80%? An older individual like, you know, mom, grandma, whoever, Say like, you know, they're happy if they get 70, 80 person, they can live their life, sleep and do all those things. That's under the population that also gets treatments as well. When it goes to the stage where it's too far gone, like for example, you mentioned you had an ACL tear. Yours was a partial tear. You're still functioning. But the risk is you may do this if something goes wrong, you're doing your rehab. That can be treated with biologic stem cells and you can get back on track and enjoy your life. If somebody comes with a full tear, they have to go for surgery. So there is a role for orthopedic surgery when you have a late stage or severely damaged joint, you go for surgery. Yeah. You do rehab at early stages, but in between stages is where we really didn't have much of a treatment until the regenerative medicine yeah. came in. Before that, we were like, okay, what do, what do we need to do? Do some physical therapy exercise, cut down your lifestyle, 
when it gets to the point like, oh, I can't handle it, you go for surgery. Yeah. So now we have this majority of the people fall into this category where you heal him, you get him back on track, you start enjoying your life, you will never be deconditioned after. If you enjoyed this clip from The Ranveer Show, we've uploaded a ton of other clips related to a ton of other topics. So explore the channel because there's something for everyone.